Peregrine falcons were once one of the most common birds of prey, with a range that extended to nearly every region of the earth. However, they almost became extinct. Joel Jeep Pagel, raptor ecologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, has been working with peregrine falcons for most of his career. We are at the China Bluff nest site on the Klamath National Forest, right next to the Klamath River, where peregrines have been for 35 to almost 40 years. Peregrine falcons were one of the very first species to be placed on the endangered species list. There we go, male. In California in the early 1980s, there were only about 20 pair or so. They were a species that were completely on the brink of extinction, and we almost lost them. Several factors contributed to the bird's decline, including poaching, and the use of the pesticide DDT. And when that particular chemical got into the food chain, it impacted peregrines by causing eggshell thinning. Because the eggshells were so thin, we had to do things such as nest site manipulation. In an effort to save the species, peregrine falcon eggs were collected and exchanged. These are dummy peregrine falcon eggs. These are formed in such a way that it is the exact shape and size of a peregrine egg as well as the same heat retention capabilities that a peregrine egg has. The real eggs were then placed in a specially designed incubator. The incubator is a device that we had the Rogue River National Forest radio shop build for us. After the eggs hatched, the chicks were banded and then returned directly to their nests. And then we put the chicks in, and oftentimes by the time that we would pull the rope up, the adults were feeding the youngsters. It was a very effective way to increase the population size of peregrine falcons. Collecting eggs is no longer necessary, and peregrine falcon chicks are now banded at the nest site. To reach these nest sites, repelling is still usually required. It is difficult and dangerous especially when the adult peregrines try to protect their nests. One particular nest site that I climbed in, and during my 20-minute nest entry, from the time that I throw the rope down over the cliff to the time that I'm pulling my rope back up, this female hit me 87 times. She does not want me to go into the nest site. When I climb into the nest ledge, what I'll do is I'll sex the youngsters based on the size of their tarsus. Female peregrines are one-third larger than the male peregrine falcons. Eggshell fragments are collected and monitored, and the chicks banded. These are the bands that we put on peregrine falcons, and they'll be on the birds for the remainder of its life. It's a method for us to help understand where the birds go, and in some instances, how those birds die. Samples of prey remains are also collected. And that tells me what the peregrines have been eating. In this instance, they've been eating flicker, swift, uh, there's jay feathers, there's thrush, and there's also racing pigeon bands. The Fish and Wildlife Service, which manages wildlife, has worked with the Forest Service, which is responsible for wildlife habitat. These and other agencies have worked together to save the species. Peregrine falcons are an amazing success story of the Endangered Species Act. It has been an incredible journey with lots of people doing lots of work on peregrine falcons all throughout the United States. We're really lucky. Their populations have resurged to the point where they've been taken off the endangered species list and they're now doing quite well. <laughs>